Hey guys, this is Bearded for episode two of the Embark series. Today we're going to be talking about uh, finalizing our team. And then we're going to jump into exactly what you needed to set up early on in the game and when you need to set it up and how you need to set it up. Now, I already recorded this once and I realized that my audio, which was on different tracks, wasn't recorded. So I've already done it. We're just going to go back through and I'm going to talk about what I did and why I did it, which will be, make for a shorter video anyway, so you guys don't have to wait for stuff to happen. So before I jump in there, I'm just going to cover really quick my team again. If you guys remember, what we did is we set up a team early on um, in the last video with these skills here. And the only thing that I didn't have on this team was a weapon smith and an armor smith. But we'll get those later on when we get more people and we'll have other people focus on those. The only thing that I didn't do over there really was set up these extra points. And so what I do for this is I go through immediately and put 32 points on everybody for dodging. And then I take whatever skill I think is more important for each person and I put points into that skill. And I just kind of distribute the points evenly through everybody. The only real exception here was for Will, as Will is set up to be a researcher. So he does a fast working, fast researching, and, and he's also a fast researcher for imaginative too. So all of these kind of combine. And so what I do also is I make sure I go to him and I'm gonna make him a competent researcher. So I'm gonna spend a hundred points on his researching skill. And then I'll divvy up, you know, 32 points into the other skill he's gonna work on. So basically what I went through and did is put 32 points in any of their skills that I wanted them to focus on. And then for my researcher and my woodcutter, I put in all of my extra points afterwards into those two skills. Um, then we went from there and we loaded into the game. I just picked a, a random area that was in the green zone. I think it was right here. Uh, I picked an area here and then we just jumped inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that file up for you guys. I'll talk about what I've done. So the first thing I do when I get into a game is I immediately hit the tilde button, which is the button right next to the number one key. And I pause the game because I want to kind of look at my surroundings. Now I am here now because this is where I chose to move to. But when I started, my guys were, they were over here. So I started over here where I landed. This is where I landed. And I immediately pause the game and I look around to see what I see. The first thing I do is I go to water mode to kind of look at what fresh water is around me and available. I know that I'm not close to an ocean, so I have to make sure I can rely on fresh water. I ended up seeing this fresh water body over here with a size um of 889 now that doesn't mean that there's only 889 water right here that means that's how many blocks that this body of water takes up so if i click on this i have a size of the water for 2000 28732 which is a pretty sustainable and a nice starting amount of water i also then noticed that there was more fresh water under the ground here and here with another pool of a pretty large water Close by so that's why I chose this area another thing that I had to take note of before I moved my people over here was going to the combat tab I always go to the combat tab before I move anybody anywhere and I look around to see what kind of animals that I might have to deal with bears or wolves and then it also will highlight hmm I have a monkey faction right here or shit I have a fly faction right here so you want to make sure you don't have to move past those guys to go wherever you're going to set up your base. So I saw, all right, well, I have them there and I have them there. They're obviously hostile for right now. The flies will always be hostile. I don't think they'll ever be friendly. These guys could potentially be friendly in the future, but I don't know. So I don't want to get too close to them because I don't want to fight them just yet. So that's the first thing I do when I jump, in, jump into a game. The second thing I do was look for hostile activity. The third thing I do is immediately after I decide where I want to build my base, which in this case was right here, I immediately go to the stockpile, go to everything, mark it for barrels, make sure that all these, all these items are checked, 
and then I make a stockpile. It's the first thing I do before I have anybody do anything. I just grab and drag a stockpile. That way I 100% know that there is space for them to store items. I then immediately open up my jobs tab. And then I go through here and I mark six on all of the jobs that are the most important for each individual person. If they have two jobs, I mark the less important job with a five. And then I go through and put everybody on three herbalism. I put everybody on five doctoring. I put everybody on four hauling. I will always keep everybody on four hauling. And the reason for this is because when you have a nice, clean, organized base where shit is not scattered everywhere, your people will be more efficient. They'll be able to haul quicker. They'll be able to focus on their jobs rather than having to haul things back and forth to the base over and over again. They will be able to take things from the stockpile and put them in the workshops because ideally you would have your stockpiles close by your workshop so they can do that and inside your base rather than having to run all over the map trying to grab what they need. So. I like to have everybody focus on hauling and then doing other things. If everything stays hauled, then it'll be much easier and more efficient for your colony to prosper. And the other thing I put everybody on is on mining. Everyone will do mining if they don't have any of their primary or secondary job to do. So I want everybody to focus on mining. That way we can get stuff cleared out easily. And the reason I don't have anybody focus on it is because we essentially have an unlimited supply of mining blocks. We can just literally mine the entire world. There's an unlimited amount of experience they can get. It's not hard to level up and you can get things more done done more quickly. You have everybody control, can, contributing to that. So I, once I set all of this up, including everybody have three having three herbalism, I close that down. So I have now my stockpile and my jobs set. I then immediately go to my basic workshops and I set up one of each basic workshop along my stockpile. That way the materials that workshops need are right next to it. So I drop those down immediately. Now they don't get built immediately because you have to get other things done. So once I have those in place where I want them for the time being, because we will eventually move them inside into a room to get the bonuses from that. Um, I then go to my harvest trees and I select an area of trees that I want to harvest and I make sure that they will be able to haul that to the stockpile. So that's done. So I now have the stockpile, have my workshops, my jobs are set up, and I have trees selected to be taken care of by my woodcutter. That's gonna be very, very important. Then following that, I click the harvest plants button and I see what plants I can harvest around me. And I'll notice that, hmm, I've got a pretty decent amount of plants that I can get to and harvest. But I also wanna just double check on the military mode to make sure that there's no animals, wolves, spiders, enemy factions that are going to be in those areas. So when my workers go over there to harvest those things, they don't get attacked and killed. So once I know it's clean, then I can go back to my harvest plants and select what areas I want to harvest. So while all that's happening, they will immediately start to chop down trees, harvest plants, build your build your workshops. And they will all have tasks to do. And you will also have a space to store all that. As soon as my first building is done, which is usually my kitchen, I go to order item, I go to rice, I go to maintain stock of 10 and I click maintain stock. And then I go to my simple meal and I maintain stock of 10 simple meal. Well, Bearded, why don't you just have them maintain a stock of 100? Well, if they don't eat the food, it will spoil and then it'll be wasted resources. So I try to only maintain as much as I need to make sure it's constantly cycling out with fresh food. In addition to that, later on when you have higher quality foods to make, if you're spending all your resources trying to maintain a 100 stock of a simple meal, you're not going to ever be able to get started into building a lavish meal or the vegetable meal, vegetable stew or anything else because they're going to be focused on building 100 simple meals all the time. So that's that thing. The next thing I immediately do is once my research lab is up, I immediately go to my research here and I click on basic storage and I click on research. 
they will automatically start researching basic furniture, dining rooms, graves, and barrels, and then they will do the basic research for storage. It will do those all in order. So I get all those set up immediately because I want to get, as soon as possible, get some beds down. So I can have some beds, that way if people are going to have babies, I can start producing babies and growing my population. Immediately following that, research is done. I open the research tab back up and then I go for stone crafting. So I click on smelting and then I hit research and I get my masonry workshop unlocked and then my tools unlocked and then my smelting is unlocked. That way I can get rid of items through the burn item for things that I don't need or have an abundance of. And I can also start making tools which will allow my workers to be more efficient with what they're doing in their jobs. So I get that done as a second research while everyone's still either building their stuff or doing their primary task. As you can see, I have all this stuff set up and it's on June 7th right now. So this is only, I think, seven in-game days. Seven in-game days have passed since I started, um, which is not that long. It's pretty quick. And I play on times three, the max speed. So it goes by really, really fast to get all that done. And once you have a good process set up, then you will be able to start new campaigns a lot more quickly. So I get those things done. As soon as I get the, craft, the carpenter's, crafter's workshop set up, I go ahead in here, and as soon as I have the materials to build a pick and a hatchet and a hoe, I build those. But without any research, you do have access to crafting clubs. So I immediately will start crafting uh, the number of clubs to match the number of people I have. So in this case, it was six, and so I crafted six clubs. That way they had something to attack with if they got attacked or we got attacked by people. So they would have basic weapons to fight with. Now keep in mind, you will need to have sticks in order to craft clubs. So you'll have to go through your, your, your carpenter's workshop also and set up jobs to maintain you know, a number of planks and a number of sticks. Planks are not super, super important right up front. Because I think that the most important thing is to immediately get sticks going as you're able and crafting those sticks into clubs for your people to have weapons. If you do that, you'll be able to defend a wolf. You'll be able to defend an early attack of flies. Um, and you'll, be have a, you'll have enough damage behind them in order to make them, allow them to survive. So sticks and then clubs. Make a number of clubs for every single person. Once you've made your clubs, you can then go here to the military mode. You can set up a new squad and put everybody inside of that squad. Then you can click on somebody, go to equipment, go to edit. Now I have deleted all the presets here and I made a new preset called basic. I put a club here and then I fill this in with the best possible thing they can use on the left side. And then the next best possible thing they can use in the middle. And then any tertiary items they may need on the right. So the way this works is, is they're going to go through and they're going to say, I need a club. But if there's no club, then I'll look for a hatchet. And if there's no club and there's no hatchet, then I'll look for a pick. So that's how that works. So it'll always search this left side first and try to equip that item. And if that item doesn't exist, it'll move to the next column and try to equip that item and then to the final column and try to equip that item. Some things to note here is that you can wear two items on the same spot sometimes. For instance, you can have a uh, cuirass as well as a shirt at the exact same time. Or you can have a cloak and a shirt at the same time so they can equip both. So if I don't have a, a cuirass, then it'll go for look for a cloak and it'll find a cloak. So if I find a cloak, it'll also look for a shirt because it can wear both of these at the same time or both of these at the same time. That's why I have these presets set up the same way. The other thing that's really important to set up is make sure you have your armor protection max dragged to the right. That way they can equip things up to that maximum level of protection. So if it's down here, it won't equip anything that's in your equipments tab if it only if it has a higher protection rating of than one so make sure these are always over to the right and set these up how you want i always just set them up for leggings and then pants and then none and then gauntlets and then mittens and then none 
I always set these things up to have the best quality here, then whatever else I can have, and then whatever else I can have. That way they will always go through and look for everything that they can equip, even if it's not the best thing, they'll equip something if it's available. So that's how that's set up. Another thing to note though, is that if you have more than one weapon up here selected and more than one utility up here selected, say I have a hatchet and a pickaxe, and then I tell them to equip this basic loadout, they will look for a, a club. And if they find one, they will still look for a hatchet and they will still look for an axe. So you could have a potentially one person equipping all three of these weapons or the same thing with your utility items. You can have people hold multiple amounts of ammunition. So they'll hold three stacks of ammunition or you can have them hold, uh, you know, a, a, a buckler and ammunition or a targe and ammunition and a buckler. So I just set these up. I only have them focus on utilizing one weapon or one utility unless I have somebody doing range at which in course I will make them hold three stacks of ammunition. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So as soon as I craft the clubs, I set up my preset, I assign people to a squad, and then I assign that preset to every single person. So I go to uniform, basic, and then load. And you can see here that the poor Banyan club has been assigned to this individual. Now, a thing to notice is that just because it's assigned to them doesn't mean they're they're carrying it or it's equipped. If you want them to equip the items that they have assigned to them all the time, you have to make sure that this button right here, wear equipment, is toggled. It should be green. As long as it's green, they will wear all the time whatever they have assigned. So that's the second thing, or third thing. That's the next thing that I do. So let's cover again what we've done. We've started, we paused, we looked for water. Once we found a water source that we liked, we checked the area for enemies. So we looked for water with this button here, and then we checked the area for enemies. And then we say, okay, can I move here without getting my people attacked? Do I have to worry about wolves or bears or any anybody else patrolling into my area to attack my people right off the bat? No, I don't. That's an okay place to move. Then I decide I'm moving here. So I'm gonna place down a stockpile, that way I have place, a place to store everything. Then, while everything is still paused, I set up these buildings here along the stockpile to be built. That way they can be built as people start working. That's great. So once all that happens, and you've got your stockpile there, your people are ready to move, you have those built, you can go ahead and hit play and have your people start working and harvesting things. While they're moving over to this area is a good time for you to select which trees you wanna harvest and then for you to select which plants you wanna harvest. And so they will start to move to do those actions as they're needed. They will also make sure everything that they do is hauled to the stockpile, which is also great for keeping your base organized. As soon as your first research is done on your research tree, you'll have access to beds. I immediately set up build orders. So by going to furniture, beds, I immediately set up multiple build orders to build beds with a space in between. Each bed can hold two people. Right now I can hold a total of 10. I only have six. I don't really need these two beds, but I have some overflow here that they can utilize. So that is all set up here, which is phenomenal. So now I've got my stockpile, my jobs, my food, my, my harvesting set up, my trees, the harvest are set up, my workshops are set up. I can, once the workshops are built, I can set up their orders to what I need to maintain, which is food and sticks and then craft clubs. And then you set up their equipment panels. That way you can assign those clubs and any other equipment you may get to them. And then you equip a, you, you select the equip wear equipment item or wear equipment button you toggle this on so they can wear their clubs all the time so no matter where they're at they will have their equipment with them and then you just allow them to finish researching things and then you move on to tools while the, while all that's happening this is going to take a few to, a few minutes 
you can have them start digging out areas that way so they have something to work on if they have no job that's primary for them they can start leveling up their mining and start collecting peat and they can start collecting plant fiber to utilize when you unlock more things but all in all this is a very 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 great starting position to be in because you can defend yourself you have food being made you have water available to you and you have somewhere to sleep so they can start producing kids this is really all you need in order to get things started they will not die from anything that you as a player do they, they have all their needs met for the time being so this is exactly what i do when i first land in every single time i know it seems very simple Hopefully I was able to explain some things to you better. If you still have questions about this particular aspect of it, leave them down below and I will answer them. And next part, episode three, we will cover how to start organizing your base a little bit more, what to do if you're attacked and how to utilize troop movements. We will, we will figure out, hmm, do I have my job set up properly or not? Is everything working? We'll kind of go into a little more advanced things on to make sure to maintaining and making sure your your base is running correctly and efficiently hopefully you've learned something let me know provide some feedback in the comments below i'll see y'all for the next episode